know what's funny just now? Tighten this up. It's pulling out of this parking lot really carefully because there's kids around, you know? Not like that, I just mean, you know, be careful, there's kids, you know? They could do something stupid like stand behind your car while you're backing out. And, uh, I, I like, you know, I always have my windows down when I'm really trying to carefully drive in like a city or a parking lot. So my windows were down. This kid was like, bah! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, and um, I was like, oh shit, what the fuck? It scared me. And I also was like, oh my God, I don't want to hit a kid. But you know what? Good on that kid. That shit was pretty funny. Let's get a fucking carrot out of here. Yeah, it's funny the road, isn't it? Oh Jesus, this again. The road is funny, right? You think like, I'm gonna eat all this good food. I got like carrots, apples, tomatoes, and nothing else, just raw, right? When you get on the road, you're like, oh, let me get some carb, let me eat some fucking garbage. Those times are past for me. At least right now they are. I don't want it anymore. You know what happens when I eat fucking garbage? Three things. I work out until I'm fucking blue in the face, do cardio, bust my ass at the gym, and I still don't look good. Or another way of saying that is I still hate the way I look. All those assholes who talk about it's the diet is the main part of it, you hear it for years, right? Everybody's saying, I gotta lose weight, I gotta lose weight, I gotta lose weight. So what do they do? go to the gym. To make almost no change in the diet. To be fair, it's tough. It's like beyond tough. It's fucking very difficult. But when you do it, when you're not fucking dialed into the fucking sugar anymore, I mean like the added sugar. Come on, motherfucker. I'm driving to Nashville right now, by the way. Christ. When you're not dialed into the added sugar and the flour and the fucking... Is that it, basically? The bread and... Oh, the carbs. When you're not dialed into it, you don't crave it anymore. And it gets better. As long as you don't reintroduce it. So anyhow, three things happen. I work out until I'm blue in the face and I still look like shit. I'm still unhappy with the way I look. I feel worse. Pick, pick a way. In what way? Pick one. Anyone. How about, uh, my skin looks bad, all right? That's not a joke, you think, oh, you, start, you don't know it's from that, everybody wants to dismiss that one right away. I'm like, yeah, I can't eat Oreos anymore, I get a fucking rash all over my face. You, oh, you, did you eat anything else that day? It could have been something else you ate. Why, why would people fucking do that? It's the worst, I already made a video about people being dismissive. But that's, there's another kind. There's people who just want to challenge you for no reason. Like, just because they don't like. I don't know why. I'm not even going to speculate. And, you know, yeah, I get heartburn. But anyhow, I'm not eating the garbage on this trip. I'm committed to it. Because I feel better. It's like, isn't it funny? You want to... You feel better doing something, and you're like, so let me go eat, like, a fettuccine Alfredo. Let me eat McDonald's or whatever. It's funny how little it takes to make you put it on your body, too, at my age. I'm about to turn 37 next week. By the time you see this, I'll already be 37. Hey, don't complain about it. Look, it's the way it happens. You want to make videos, you record them. What am I going to fucking edit the video right here on the road? I'm going to put it online right now so it's real time. Come on. I want to talk about Green Day for a second, and I know, I know. I guess I want to tell two stories. I want to talk about Green Day, and I want to tell a story. I don't usually talk about my personal life for a variety of reasons, but one of them I'm going to talk about. Ugh, I don't want to tell the whole David Bowie thing. Ugh. Let me say it simplified. You know how everybody's like, I love David Bowie. Oh my God, I love Bowie. David Bowie's the best. And you're like, oh really? And they're like, yeah, I love, like, you're like, what do you like? And they're like, Ziggy Stardust, Labyrinth. And you're like, as I suspected. They're, 
in my opinion, not a real Bowie fan. Not that I actually give a shit. The, the whole reason I ever even thought about that is because it perplexes me that you would love somebody so much, like David Bowie, and not be like, oh shit, what? He's got like 30 albums out? I have to go listen to all of them. So that's always struck me as odd. And as I was discovering this about myself, this is a long, was it a long time ago? I don't know. Let's just say it was. Let's say it was a long time ago. I was dating this woman. See, making it personal. And she was like, she did the David Bowie thing. And I don't think I was being an asshole about it. In retrospect, maybe I was, and I didn't realize it. But I just had to ask her. I was like, what's it? Oh, what do you, what David Bowie do you like? And she was like, you know, Let's Dance, Ziggy Stardust, Labyrinth, whatever. To be fair, she did blow me away at one point by busting out a Blur song. And I was like, all right. But I gave her my Bowie spiel. She didn't say anything about it. And then one time later, at Outback Steakhouse, she was drinking. And she got real, like, weird about the Bowie thing. She was like, oh, like, are you going to make... Oh, we were talking about Blur, actually. She's like, oh, yeah, are you going to make me feel like shit about them, too? And I was like, what do you mean? I just threw a carrot. I was like, what do you mean? She was like, are you going to make me feel like shit about them like you did with Bowie? And I was like, well, oh my God, what? Did I make you feel bad about David Bowie? And she's like, yeah, you made me feel cheap. And I was like, date ruined at this point. There's no recover for me. Who's go sideways like that? God damn it. Give me the fucking thing, motherfucker. I'm trying to drive to Nashville. I don't know the fucking way. It's not like I'm driving to LA or Michigan where I know the fucking route. All right. See, 11 miles on the GPS to go till I get off the next freeway. This was important. I don't know why I was... Oh, you know why I was going to tell that David Bowie story? Because I was listening to some Bowie today. And you know what's funny? I was listening to the song from Labyrinth. Just, that's just what came on. Um, obviously, I don't fucking tell that story as a half-assed David Bowie fan. Which is fine. If you're a fucking... you like Ziggy Stardust and Labyrinth, great. Those are great things. Awesome. Again, I just want to signify to you that I am not a Labyrinth fan. Ziggy Stardust only fan. Okay? I know and love his catalog. Oh, do I get an award for that? Alright, so I told the Bowie thing. And then I just wanted to talk about Green Day for a second. You know, Longview, really great song. Incredible bass line, so simple, so much fun. If I'm not mistaken, it's about masturbating. Is that right? And boredom, but God, just what a perfect, like, summer song. It's so cool. If you know a little bit about music, you know that's a very Mixolydian song. It utilizes the Mixolydian mode. Maybe they didn't even know that when they wrote it. I know there's a story about whatever the bass player's name is, frying. This is a direct quote. He just remembers frying on acid and leaning against the wall when he wrote that bass line. Great. I don't give a shit if he takes drugs or not. So Longview's great. Welcome to Paradise is really good. Basket Case. I know I'm naming the hits. Um, Basket Case is cool. It definitely blew my mind at the time. Like, I loved it. I'll even go with Brain Stew, as simple as it is. And that is very simple. I don't know what I feel about when I come around nowadays. And so it kind of, for me, believe it or not, it ends there. I'm not like, you know, I had that conversation with Bahama John at one time. And we both started talking about that American Idiot album. Which is remarkable because for a lot of people, American Idiot was like their album. It was like revelatory, their favorite album. They listened to it all year. People especially love the name Jesus. Jesus of Suburbia? Is that what it's called? Which is funny on the heels of a David Bowie conversation because he's got that whole Buddha of Suburbia um, soundtrack album thing. But to be honest, I'm not really a fan of it. It's pretty average. But the reason I'm talking about Green Day is because I listen to those songs. Again, Longview is to me like their crowning achievement. And I tried to listen to American Idiot to see if I could absorb the goodness that everybody had in mind when they experienced it. 
Just can't do it. It just doesn't do anything for me. I can't even make it past, like, the third track. Which is, who cares? Fuck me. I mean, I don't like American Idiot by Green Day. Who could possibly care? Who's even watching this? Crystal? Igor? Not your e Crystal Igor. Crystal Pesoda? Igor? My brother? My sister? My mom? The bat? Kent, probably. Trent? Wow, do I, am I up to eight people? Oh no, nine! Nine people! Oh no, I didn't think of you last. I just, you know how the mind works, right? So, again, it's not odd to me that a band like Green Day, that I think is pretty much average, is like uber, I hate that word, but I'll go ahead and use it, uber popular. Because that's, I mean, it's still, it's such a common thing for some average ass fucking band to be the biggest thing in the world. It does, it still strikes me though. Anytime that happens, I'm still just like, man, amazing. For example, let me just share something with you. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. Sorry, this fucking like lumber truck just like cut in front of me. I was scary. Good Lord. Um, Kodali. I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong, but Zoltan Kodali. Italian composer. What a name too, right? Zoltan Kodali, Kodali. I don't know how to, you know, you know how to say Italian words. I don't. So that motherfucker. First of all, who's ever heard of him? Okay, nobody. Pretty much. I'm sure. I gotta go read on him. I'm sure he had some notoriety at some point. Early 1900s composer. Is that the 19th century? 1900s? Or is that the 20th century? And what are we in now? Then? The 21st century? 20th Century Fox. The Doors? Oh no. I know you know that song. You're like way into The Doors. Which, fuck yes, man. The Doors are special. By the way, Jailhouse Rock by Elvis came on, and I was like, all right, it's great. But you know what? I think Eddie Cochran's got a better voice. If you don't know who Eddie Cochran is, it's a summertime blues guy. He didn't put out much because he died pretty young, I think. But Eddie Cochran's voice, Man, that motherfucker's got it. I think he's got a better voice than Elvis. Controversial opinion. Hashtag. Was I going to say anything else? So yeah, Zoltan Kodali. I never heard him, and I've been listening to him. And you know what? That motherfucker's shit is like, oh my gosh. I listen to this, like, duet for violin and cello. Unbelievable. I've been, I have it on vinyl. I've been just, every morning I listen to it. Is it getting opera number seven or something number seven, whatever the fuck it is? But you know what? Not that this is any indicator. He wasn't thinking about, in, in 1920, Zoltan Kodali was not thinking about how many Spotify listeners he would have in the year 2022. But he's got about 40,000, maybe 60,000, something like that. Which, if you want to compare that to like, Beethoven or Mozart, don't even try it. There's, they're not going to be close. I, I don't know the numbers. I could check right now, but I don't want to kill myself on accident driving with the phone and the camera. But I guarantee for your box, Mozarts, Beethovens, fuck it, even your Prokofievs, worse yet, your fucking Pavarotti's, you know, the heavy cats. I guarantee their listens are like at least millions, if not tens of millions. I'm gonna check that later. Zoltan Kodali, it's like 60,000. You know who's another one? Albert Kettleby. You never heard of him, right? British composer. His big thing is called In a Monastery Garden. It's so beautiful. It's fucking unbelievable. And again, you're just not really that well known. And then you got like Green Day, like. I'm sure it's like 20 million monthly listeners. <laughs> you know I'm, I got a bad attitude about that because of my <clears throat> 34 month. I say it, but it hurts. 34 monthly listeners. And I know I talk about that all the time. You're probably sick of it. But it is funny, okay? It's like I almost want some somebody to be like, hey, man, you know how you've been making music for like all those years, put all that time, effort, money and energy and emotion everything else into it 
it's not working. Like somebody, I want somebody to be like, it's not working. Like nobody's listening. I know that's not true. There's 30 people or 34 people listening. And as I always say, that means the world to me. It is funny though, right? And all the time I keep remembering, you know what the big problem was for me? And I don't think you can go back and undo this. I mean, I know you can't. I just mean, I don't know if you can try to correct it. Because I just didn't play that many live shows. Because I never liked it that much. There's never anybody there. If you can overcome that and keep playing shows, maybe you get more people to listen to you. Because every fucking band or artist or rapper that's not particularly good that I always hear about, like, oh, my roommate, or not my roommate, my neighbor in Brooklyn's got a band. Oh, I can almost remember the name of it, too. Nope. Best, he's called Best Behavior. He's talented. What was his name? Alex. He's talented. No possibility he's listening to this one. He's talented, but you know what? They had like a fucking insane amount of monthly listeners. They're at Sun Rock Yoga Studio in St. George where I used to go to yoga. Sunny. She's one of the yoga teachers. Her fucking daughters. I think their names are Megan Dia. They're hot. They're hot like Asian American girls. Let me just preface it with that. And they're good singers too. They have like traditionally, well, more in a modern sense, like good voices, you know, good sexy voices are talented. And they had a hit at some point. And I'm just like looking at their monthly listeners and I'm fucking blown away. So again, there's some part of the formula that I don't get. And I know part of that formula has to be that I just did tour, 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 tour. You know why I didn't? There's a lot of reasons. You've already heard most of them, but I like making music in a studio. You know, I'm sorry to go all Brian Eno on you, but it's not that that can't change. I'm like, okay, hey, you know what? The GPS says 1,600 miles till the next second. I'm turning it off. I'm in the perfect position now to actually set up tours and go do them. Well, there's a lot to it. A lot of reasons I don't want to. One of them is that I'm afraid. You know. Another one of them is that I don't fucking like it. I'll just give you the reason. I'm afraid. Um, I don't think I'll really get much out of it. I don't love the idea, and I never have, of taking my songs and stripping them down to their more bare elements so that I can perform them live. Speaking of, what a pretty lame setup. Guy with, I've always saw a guy with a laptop, is, or is back in the day, back guy with the CD player, is a fucking lame presentation. At the end of the day, people don't give a shit. You know, you can look at what fucking DJs are now and see that pretty plain as day. Like, look how fucking excited people get about DJs. A guy with the laptop, literally. No, well, let me not be completely dismissive. In some cases, a really talented music producer, mixer, composer guy with a laptop, okay? Not all the time, though, not that often. Oh, I'm entering Fish Lake National Forest. What are the other reasons I don't want to play live? I don't like it that much. It, isn't that just honest for me to say? I don't like it that much. Like, if you are at the fucking band or a group of musicians, we're improvising, shit's happening. But I've hired a band to play my songs. There's a fucking show. Go listen. You can go listen to an entire performance right now. If you look on YouTube, Peter Litvin, Arlene's Grocery. An entire show of me with my band playing my songs. We're improvising too, and it's cool. And in a lot of ways, I think it's respectable. But I didn't like it enough to continue doing it. Why don't you contrast that with... Can you say that? You know, there are always a compare and contrast. I'm going to... I don't know. I'm not comfortable using that word yet. Why don't you compare that to my experience of making songs in the studio? Which, by the way, I just listened to fucking 24 of my new demos. This next record, which has been called either Suicide Castle or Suicide 2.0. I know, I know. The shit is hot, right? It ain't all fucking sad. There's a lot going on. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of heart. Oh, shit. It's a lot of heart. Fuck. I don't know where these motherfuckers going five miles an hour on the fucking freeway. A lot of fun, a lot of heart, a lot of darkness, a lot of magic, a lot of craziness, a lot of edge. 
And I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna like it. I mean, I always think it's gonna be my best one yet. God, nobody thought that about the last two. I am hashtag misjudged though. I'm sorry. All right, enough of that fucking complaining shit. Um, yeah, I guess what was I saying? Compare it with my experience of being in the studio. Like, I obviously like doing that and get something out of it. I like it so much that I can't fucking stop doing it. I can't stop fucking spending my money to perfect the shit. Can't stop putting my time and fucking life into it. To me, it's just simple. It's like, I don't have, I do have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with making songs and songwriting and recording, but not like playing live. Playing live is mostly like a don't particularly like it thing. And yet, I do love playing guitar. I do love playing guitar for people, and I do love performing for people, like juggling for them. You know what? Performance art, to me, is one of the more honest, and I don't have to talk with carrots in my mouth, but don't forgive me. Ugh. Popping like a motherfucker. Performance art, to me, is a lot more honest than me or anybody taking their studio songs and bringing them out live. It just is. It's typically more spontaneous. It's more real. It's more. It's a little more dangerous, for lack of a better word taking your song and turning them into a live performance and hiring a band or playing with a laptop sounds like a fucking boner kill to me. That's just me. She might take on it. What the fuck am I talking about? God, my ears are popping. Alright, well. Maybe I'll get inspired to tell some other things. Um... Damn, I just want to put this piece of Kara back in the bag. Fucking snowy. This is pretty wild here. This is like eastern Utah. Later.